Hello and welcome to part two of the Lumbering History of Wisconsin uh, PowerPoint. Again, my name is Jared. Um, and in this part, we are going to go through a lumbering process activity. Um, so this is part two. If you're looking for part one, uh, go back um, and look for part one somewhere else. Um, and then part three is also in a different video as well. So this is part two, um, the middle part of this lumbering activity. Um, so uh, remember if that stop sign pops up in the top left-hand corner, please pause the video and do whatever activity or discussion um, I prompt you to do. Um, but I will now introduce to you our activity. So this uh, lumbering process activity can be done in many different ways. And your teacher is going to kind of explain that to you. Um, teachers, if you haven't set this up already, you can do this with just cards that they place on their desk in the correct order. Or if you want to get them to get up and move, you can print off the big pictures and have them run around um, and try to get the correct order that way. Um, so what I have for you are 12 different pictures in the lumbering process. There's only a few here, but here they are all together right there. Um, so there are 12 total pictures in this lumbering process. What we need to do is we need to have you organize them in the correct order. So the first one in the lumbering process is going to be step number one, all the way down to step number 12. You can see that we have an answer sheet, a pointer. You can see that we have an answer sheet right here. All right, so you can see there's number one all the way down to number 12. All right, so what you're going to do is whatever one you think is the first step, you're going to put in the first one, and then next, 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 all the way down to the final step, number 12. Now, to make this a little easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the first and the last answer. The reason for that is I want to make sure that you're starting off on the right steps and you're ending on the right steps. So the first answer is picture letter D. So if you look at this right here, you can see that this picture has a tree standing in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere and has a bunch of lumberjacks standing around it. Okay, That's going to be the first steps. So that's where all of the trees start off. They start off in the middle of the woods. All right. The last step, if you look down at number 12 down there, the last step is letter J. And then picture J here is a complete log cabin that they built out of this wood that they process. So what we have to do is we have to fill out all of the letters in between. All right. So you have to correctly organize all of these pictures into the correct steps. Now you notice that number one does not start with letter A, so it's not alphabetical. So if you try to do that, it just doesn't work like that. All right, so they're all jumbled up in a big mess. So you just have to put them in the correct order next to the steps, um, the numbered steps on that answer sheet. All right, I will let your teacher um, give you more instruction from here because I know there's a couple different ways you can do this. So uh, listen to your, listen up to your teacher um, and you can pause the video once my face disappears. Right, hopefully you have gotten done the lumbering process activity. Um, if you have not yet, please pause the video right now so I don't start revealing answers while you're finishing that up. Uh, but if you have, we can move on. So what we are going to do next is we're going to go over the lumbering process. As we do that, the actual pictures that you were looking at are going to pop up on the screen with the letters in the top left hand corner. As we go through those, you can glance down at your answer sheet and see if you uh, got those answers correct. If you didn't, don't feel bad because these answers are kind of tricky. Um, and a lot of these steps are kind of really close to each other in this process. So you could, it's easy to mix them up a little bit. Um, so I'll do my best to go over those with you um, and we will get started. There's going to be some cool videos and stuff as we go through this as well. So, like I said, uh, the first step in this lumbering process is the tree standing in the middle of the woods. So for number one, you should have D filled in for step number one. What are we going to do to that tree? Well, we're going to go out in the woods and we are going to find the trees that we want to cut down and then we are going to start cutting them down. So for number two, you should have letter A. There's a couple of guys in this picture here. Uh, they are called the chopper and the sawyer. And there's a little video that I have here next that goes through that for you. The woods boss has selected this white pine for cutting and will blaze it with a hatchet. So what he's going to do is he's going to chop all the bark off the outside of the tree to make it easier for the chopper and the sawyer to uh, saw into that log. Two choppers notch the tree. 
and Sawyer's fell it with a cross-cut saw. All right, so now we have a tree that's laying down in the middle of the woods. So what are we gonna do next? We are going to cut it up into some smaller pieces. So you can see that they're still in the middle of the woods um, and now they're working together to get it um, into smaller pieces to move around. So the letter or number three is letter H. Um, so the lengths of the logs that they're cutting these trees into were um, 12, or eight and 16 foot lengths. Um, 16 is a log, eight foot lengths are sticks. Um, that's the terminology that they use, used at this time. All right, what are we going to do with it from there? We are going to want to move it to the next spot. So to do that, we're going to use some livestock, either horses or oxen, and we're going to put it on this really cool sled called a top loader. And that's the, the sled that everything's moving on right here. All right, um, I think I have a video of that as well. So this is them loading the logs onto the top loader. Uh, so these logs were super, super heavy. Some of them weighed over a thousand pounds. Um, so they would use chains to load them up on top of the sled. And then once they got on top of that sled or sleigh, they would um, strap them down with some more chains so that they didn't wiggle around while the horses or oxen were moving them down the trail. And you can see how difficult it is to latch down some of these logs. All right, but eventually they get them up there. Okay, and these top loaders sometimes were very good times to take pictures because they're in kind of impressive with how big that they built these logs on top of these sleighs. Um, sometimes they built up the logs on top of the sleighs or the top loaders just to take pictures and they never actually pulled them down the trail. Um, you can imagine how heavy this stack of wood here is for those few horses to pull around. I really th don't think that they pulled this around um, with all those logs stacked on there. Um, it'd just be too tippy to pull down the trail. All right, would pull the logs down the trail just like this video right here. I think it'd be kind of fun to ride on the logs like that down the trail. All right, so. Where do we think that they headed next? Um, so the logs are on a that sleigh, and now we move like one or two logs out of the woods and we move like 20 logs at a time on that sleigh. The next spot we wanna move like a thousand logs at a time. Where are we gonna go to do that? So I want you to discuss with someone around you, um, where do you think they're going next? And a little hint is I want you to remember the three important things about the white pine tree. All right, so hopefully you've discussed uh, where you think these logs are going next. Um, and I did tell you a little hint um, to think about what was so important about these white pine trees. Um, so let's go over those right now. So um, what was the first thing? The first thing was that they grew really, really big. Okay, the second thing was that they grew straight up in the air. And then the third thing is that they floated. Now, which one of these three things is going to help us move uh, these logs around. So because these logs float, uh, we can use water to move them around. Okay, so that's the one that we are going to um, use to move these logs around. So if they float, we can use water. All right. Um, so what kind of water bodies do we have in Wisconsin that move around all the time without us doing anything? All right, the types of water bodies we have, we have lakes, do those move? Well, they move with waves, but they don't like flow. All right, rivers. Rivers and streams are the ones that we are going to use to move these logs around. So the next picture here, letter I for uh, step number five, so five is I, um, we are going to move these logs along a river bank. All right, so that's where all of these horses are going to pull these logs and they're going to start stationing them along the river bank. All right, this video here will show that. So you can see how these horses are walking down to the river bank. Again, remember this is in the winter time. So this is a frozen river and they are going to drop off all of these logs um, along the river bank. You can see on the outsides of that river, just how many logs they have waiting for that stream to thaw. 
tons and tons and tons of logs. And as that stream thaws, all of these logs are going to start to float in it, as you saw at the end of that video. Okay, so there's going to be some people that work along these rivers. They're called river rats or drivers. So step number six is letter L. Um, these river rats are drivers working with the logs and making sure that they get down the river. All right, step number seven is E, just further down the river. Here's a couple more pictures of these river rats or drivers helping these logs move down the river. All right, but there's something that would happen to these logs um, down the rivers. Um, so something called a log jam. A log jam is kind of like a traffic jam, but with logs. Um, so these river rats, if this happened, these river rats were in charge of freeing up these log jams. And sometimes these log jams were massive. All right, here's a couple pictures of just some famous log jams that happened. So what they had to do is they had to kind of put themselves in harm's way. Right here, they're trying to pluck out some of these logs that are holding up this log jam. Um, and when they do that, a lot of these logs are going to come crashing down the river towards them. Now, do you think they're in a very safe spot when they start picking out all these logs and they're going to make all these other logs come crashing down towards them? No, not really. So this was a very dangerous job, but someone had to do it because if they didn't free up these log jams, it was kind of like clogging up a highway for these logs. So they needed to do this so that they can continue to get the logs down to the mill. All right, here's another just massive log jam that these lumberjacks or river rats were trying to pick apart. The other way they could get rid of these log jams was using dynamite. Um, but if you blow up the logs, you can't sell them to the mill. So they didn't want to use the dynamite um, unless they really, really had to. All right. So once the logs made their way down the river, um, they're going to start to organize them a little bit better. So they would organize them by lumbering company. Um, each lumbering company had a stamp that they put on the logs to make sure that um, they got paid for the logs that they sent down the river. There's people that worked uh, further down the river that helped organize these logs as well. All right, eventually they would make it down to the mill. So step number nine is letter F, and this is a mill. This is where the logs would uh, eventually get processed. Inside of those mills are um, these machines that would help cut up the logs. So step number 10 is K. All right, we're going to start to talk about some different ways that they process the logs. This one is called um, a bandsaw. Um, and what they were doing with that is they were trying to cut up the logs to create boards inside of the logs. So they would cut them up in a very specific way to get as many boards out of that log as they could. All right, there are some basic ways that they did this, starting off with this like two-man saw with one man up top and one at the bottom. But this would take a lot of energy to process all of those logs. Um, if they, a lot of these mill sites were located along the rivers, so sometimes they could use the water flow to power these saws. Um, so they were kind of inventing different ways um, to make the, uh, processing these logs a little easier. And then this is the picture of the bandsaw that you saw before. Here's a cool video of them processing a log. Cutting a log in both directions, taken at Tigerton Lumber Company. So yeah, you can see how quickly they can process a log with these, uh, these, this bandsaw that they ended up inventing. All right, after they process all those logs, they kind of have to set them out to dry. If they don't dry the wood correctly, it's going to warp. That means it's going to twist and turn as it dries, and then it's not very good to build with. So as they let it sit out in the lumber yard, this is step 11 or letter G. I um, mean, you can see how much lumber that they're letting sit out there and dry. All right, here's another picture of a lumber yard here. And then finally, step number 12 is letter J. They're going to use that lumber to build a complete log cabin. All right, so that is the end of um, the end of part two. OK, so that is the lumbering process and the whole activity included in that. The next step is we're going to talk about the aftermath. So in part three, when I see you next, we're going to talk about the aftermath and what happened after this lumbering process.